Saturn V Quarterly Film Report, number 16, covers progress during the period September, October, and November, 1966. At Launch Complex 39 of the Kennedy Space Center, assembly of the first Saturn V flight vehicle scheduled for launch next year began on October 27th with erection of the first stage in LC-39's vertical assembly building. A second stage simulator, or spacer stage, was stacked atop the first stage, October 31st. The actual second stage is due to arrive at KSC in January 1967 from Marshall's Mississippi Test Facility after completion of acceptance firing there. The stage will then replace the simulator, which meanwhile will have provided for checkout of interface capabilities with other stages. The third stage for the first Saturn V flight vehicle was erected on November 1st, and the instrument unit was added the following day. The Apollo spacecraft completing the vehicle will be attached after the actual second stage replaces the second stage simulator. Also at LC-39, the mission of the Saturn V facilities checkout vehicle in checking out Pad A's launch facilities and ground support equipment was completed during this report period. Checkout operations had begun last June. Following repair this quarter of a rupture which occurred in August in Pad A's liquid oxygen feed line, a series of tanking tests of all three stages of the facilities checkout vehicle was successfully completed in mid-October. During the final tanking, liquid oxygen was pumped into the first stage and LOX and liquid hydrogen filled the second and third stages. Upon completion of tanking tests, the facilities checkout vehicle mounted on Mobile Launcher 1 was transferred back into the VAB on October 14th to be de-erected. The Apollo spacecraft and instrument unit were de-erected on October 15th. The Apollo Command and Service Modules were shipped to MSFC for use in the dynamic test program. The IU will remain at KSC for use in Pad B checkout scheduled to begin in July. The third stage and second stage were de-erected on October 16th. The third stage will stay for Pad B checkout. The second stage was modified at KSC to the dynamic test configuration and was shipped on October 29th to Marshall. After dynamic testing, it will later be returned to KSC for Pad B checkout. The first stage, de-erected October 21st, will be shipped to Marshall's Michoud Assembly Facility at New Orleans for storage until needed at Pad B next summer. At the Marshall Center, the second stage of the facility's checkout vehicle arrived on November 10th from KSC for further use as part of the dynamic test vehicle. After receiving inspection, the second stage was transferred to Marshall's test laboratory for installation in the Saturn V dynamic test stand. The stage was stacked atop the first stage on November 23rd. The third stage was installed on November 30th. The remaining units, including the instrument unit, the spacecraft adapter, and the Apollo spacecraft, are scheduled to be stacked in December to complete the dynamic test vehicle. Configuration 1, or full vehicle testing, to determine bending and vibration characteristics the vehicle will be subjected to in flight, is scheduled to start in January. Test completion is expected by late February. Later, for Configuration 2 testing, the first stage will be removed from the stand and the remainder of the vehicle will be tested to determine its behavior in flight after first stage burnout and separation. Post-firing checkout of the second flight stage, which was static tested at Marshall last quarter, continued during this report period. Completion of checkout and shipment to the Kennedy Space Center are scheduled in January. The third flight stage arrived at MSFC on October 1st from Michoud, where it had undergone post-manufacturing checkout last quarter by the contractor, the Boeing Company. 
The stage was installed in Marshall's static test stand on October 3rd for acceptance firing. During routine maintenance, a portion of a small O-ring was lost in the turbo pump of the center F1 engine. When efforts to remove it by flushing and mechanical means failed, the engine was removed and replaced by a spare. The third flight stage was successfully static fired on November 15th for 125 seconds duration. The time lost during engine changeout was recovered and the stage was shipped from MSFC to Michou in late November. After refurbishment and post-static checkout, the stage will be shipped to KSC in April. Post-manufacturing checkout of the fourth flight stage was completed by Boeing at Michou in late November. Vertical assembly of the fifth flight stage was finished on September 13th and the stage was moved from Michou's vertical assembly building into the manufacturing building for horizontal installation scheduled for completion in January. The sixth flight stage has been moved into the VAB and is now undergoing vertical assembly with completion scheduled next quarter. Structural assembly of major components for the seventh and eighth flight stages is in progress at Michou. Minor assembly of ninth and tenth flight stage components is also underway. The initial static firing of the first flight stage was successfully accomplished this quarter at Marshall's Mississippi Test Facility. The firing was for full duration of 384 seconds. Originally scheduled for late September, the firing had been delayed until the night of November 30th due to the modification work necessitated by cracks in the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen tanks. The cracks were discovered when reinspection of the stage was deemed mandatory following engineering evaluations of tests and inspections of the second and third flight stages by MSFC and the contractor, the Space and Information Systems Division of North American Aviation at its Seal Beach, California manufacturing facility. Principal problem areas were in the LH2 feed line duct outlets, the feed line elbows, and the LH2 tank stringers and rib ends. While the cause of the cracks is under intensive investigation, Temporary fixes by means of routing, burnishing, and application of doublers were effected to minimize schedule impact. Leakage through the aft LOX bulkhead dollar weld doubler seal presented another serious problem. Leakage discovered in an aluminum foil seal on the dollar weld doubler necessitated removal of the seal and replacing it with five coats, total thickness 18 millimeters, of a LOX compatible Dynatherm liquid sealant which had previously been utilized by Douglas Aircraft Company for a similar problem in the Saturn V's third stage. The second of the two static firings required for acceptance of the first flight stage is due to be conducted in December. The delay at MTF in first flight stage static firings occasioned by the several problem area modifications will in turn impact the scheduled launch date for the first Saturn V flight vehicle at KSC. Systems checkout of the second flight stage was completed by S&ID at Seal Beach on October 2nd. The stage will be shipped to MTF for acceptance firing when the A2 static test stand becomes available following completion of first flight stage firings. During this time, Modification work will be accomplished which will minimize the amount of work transferred to MTF with the stage. During systems installation on the third flight stage on November 29th, the inner liquid hydrogen bulkhead was damaged as workmen were removing a work ladder from the interior. Due to a failure of a weld in the ladder retracting mechanism, a 10-foot section of ladder dropped, striking the bulkhead and causing cracks in three separate areas. The cracks measured 8, 10, and 52 inches in length. Action is now being planned to correct the problem. Impact on the schedule for delivery of the stage to MTF is undetermined. The fourth flight stage is undergoing vertical assembly operations scheduled for completion in early December. Systems installation and checkout are scheduled to be completed and the stage delivered to MTF in the second quarter of 1967.
Fabrication and subassembly of structural components for the fifth flight stage were finished this quarter, and vertical assembly got underway. Completion is scheduled the first quarter of 1967. Post-firing checkout of the second flight stage, which began last quarter, continued during this report period at Douglas Aircraft Company's Sacramento, California test site. Completion of checkout, modification work, and shipment of the stage to the Kennedy Space Center are scheduled for next quarter. The third flight stage was installed in SACTO's Beta 3 stand on October 13th, and pre-firing checkout is underway in preparation for acceptance testing scheduled for early January. Factory checkout of the stage had been completed in early September at Douglas's Huntington Beach, California manufacturing facility. Factory checkout of the fourth flight stage was started in early October at Huntington Beach with completion and shipment to SACTO due next quarter. Structural fabrication and assembly of the fifth and sixth flight stages are underway at Huntington Beach and at DAC's Santa Monica plant. A series of hydrostatic tests was conducted this quarter in order to prove the structural integrity of a main propellant tank assembly under simulated design ultimate load and pressurization conditions. On September 21st, the LH-2 tank successfully completed testing to the design ultimate pressure of 140 percent. The LOX tank seal weld area had previously been tested successfully to the design ultimate pressure. Five days later, in order to determine LH-2 tank ultimate capabilities, it was hydrostatically tested to destruction. Preliminary data indicated that the margin of safety obtained for ultimate design pressures will be between 2 percent and 21 percent above the ultimate safety factor. The Qual-2 test series for the F-1 engine, which began August 1st, was completed on September 6th at the rocket engine test site at Edwards, California. The F-1 contractor, Rocketdyne, finished the qualification test program four months ahead of schedule under an incentivized contract. One engine, used for safety limits testing, was fired 18 times for a total of 1,275 seconds. Another engine, used for duration testing, reached 2,256 seconds firing time in 20 tests. All tests were completed with only minor discrepancies, which will be resolved without schedule impact. A teardown inspection of the Qual-2 test engines was held November 28th at Rocketdyne's Canoga Park, California plant, and results are being evaluated. During the quarter, Rocketdyne was awarded a contract to supply the F-1 engines for Saturn V flight vehicles 11 through 15, and for the production support necessary for the Apollo-Saturn program. A teardown inspection of Rocketdyne's uprated 230,000-pound thrust J-2 engine was held in early October at the contractor's Canoga Park plant following completion of the Qual-2 qualification test firing series. During the series of 30 tests, which began in early August at the Santa Susana test site, slightly more than 3,800 seconds of firing time were accumulated. Data evaluation showed the test series to be one of the most successful ever conducted by Rocketdyne. Rocketdyne's J-2 engine component qualification test program, which began in April 1965, neared completion this quarter. In this electrical control assembly test, helium is sprayed around the seals, a vacuum is then drawn, and any helium that enters the component is measured and recorded. At the Air Force's Arnold Engineering Development Center at Tullahoma, Tennessee, the series of J-2 engine environmental verification test firings, which started in August, continued this quarter with a total of nine firings, including two start-restart tests during November. The huge test cell shown in this cutaway drawing has the engine mounted 81 feet above ground with its exhaust blasting into a cooling chamber 100 feet in diameter and 250 feet below ground level. Altitude and thermal conditions of 110,000 feet can be simulated by the test facility. <laughs> 